Hello, my dear folks. Welcome to the show. Jack Chow on the East West Show with Jin E T V, talking about the GOP convention, which is the big, 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 big eye catcher for the whole nation at this very moment, and still going on as we speak.、Uh, there are lots of comments from different angles. A day ago, we had two days ago, we had one friend, Ken Hemming. Comment from one side, and today I have another friend of mine, wonderful friend of mine. They both are wonderful,、uh, Mr. Alan Diamante, joining me.、Uh, wonderful attorney,、uh, winning attorney, aggressive attorney. Aggressive. <laughs> okay, okay thank you. You fight, right? Well, I, I fight injustice. All right, you're fighting for justice. Anyway, to join me, share his views about the GOP convention. Alan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Jack.、All、It's、right. a pleasure. I'm、uh, every time、uh, you're here,、uh, I'm getting excited because you seem to be、uh, the one that can pinpoint the problems. Right? I hope you do the same thing today. And I'm going to ask you to be fair、uh, with you and with Ka- w- w- with、uh, with Cam. I'm going to ask you the same question as I did to him. Shall I, please? Okay.、Uh, let me ask you my first question. And、uh, we all know, we learned from the news that. The、uh, former president、uh, George Bush and the governor of uh, Ohio, uh, John Kasich, and、uh, Jeb Bush and、uh, Mitt Romney, those big shot guys of GOP, together collaboratively boycotted. That's the word, probably. If I, I, I'm afraid, if I'm using the right word, the convention. They did not attend. They refused to come. How do you read that message, please? Well, I read it as the party is obviously split; it's fragmented,、mm-hmm. and、uh, Donald Trump does not have the support of his party. He considers himself a unifier, but he has failed with the Republican Party. So that is the 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 the, the message that you get from the f- from the fact. Yes, and, and a president of the、uh-huh. United States should not only be able to unify the country. Mm-hmm. But as a leader of the, the Western or free world, we call it,、mm. should be、uh, a unifier of the world. But to look at the other side of the coin, though, the GOP convention it is a convention for GOP, yeah, for the party, right? If you disagree with something, you just go attend the party, the 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 the, 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 the convention, to express yourself. To 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 debate out, or to debate, or to fight out. So that is a responsibility we're talking about. So if I say bye bye, I'm not attending. Is not a way. I'm saying that from the other side, from the boycotter side. Do you think that's also a problem? Well, I have to respect their decision,、mm-hmm. and the reason why I respect their decision because maybe they don't want to be part of the circus. Um, unfortunately, you call it a I'm calling it a circus. Unfortunately,、oh, there's a lot of folks there、mm-hmm. that、uh, are supporting Donald Trump, are part of the campaign, and、uh, you know they're not really supporters of the principles of what I believe are the principles of the United States. Oh, I see.、Um, and these folks they talk about making America great again,、mm-hmm. but what's their version of making America great? Is that a time when we allowed slaves, or is this a time、mm-hmm. that? You know, separate but equal.、Uh, you know, we have one race, the human race, and we shouldn't be trying to t- talk about this is for black people and this is for white people.、Um, you know, people can't have abortions; they don't have、right. free choice.、Mm-hmm. Uh, there's there's constant arguing. I mean, we settled the Supreme Court settled the issue with abortion back in the 70s,、mm-hmm. but it gets Resurrected over and over again in, over every, again. in every election、right. cycle. Anyway, I like the term. I like the definition of、uh, one race, human race. That is a strong definition. I would like to uh, uh, find some other time to talk about it. Right. So let's move on to my next question. And there is a saying that Donald Trump represents himself, not the GOP,、uh, necessarily. So is that an exaggeration, please? Well,、um, the people that are boycott, boycotting the the convention probably agree with this statement.、Mm-hmm. Um, you know, through the last year of his campaign,、mm-hmm. Donald Trump has really revealed the type of person that he is.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, I would like to believe that this this is not the platform for the GOP. However, 
the majority of the Republicans had supported him, and that's why he's their 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 candidate at this point. All right, good. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm I'm very concerned that uh, the people that are supporting Donald Trump mm -hmm. have been misled. Uh, he's revealed his position on women, um, on people that have disabilities, on. Uh, POWs, mm -hmm. on Mexicans, mm -hmm. on people that are of Islamic faith, mm -hmm. um, and I could go on. And uh, he's also said many things that are not true. Many things, he, co he continues to say things that are not true. Mm -hmm. He describes China really like an enemy of the United States uh -huh. instead of a, a world partner. Uh -huh. um, even our NATO partners. Um, he describes them as uh, not like allies, mm -hmm. but of people that are taking advantage of the United States. This is not the language of a unifier. This is the language of an individual that has um, a lot of issues. All right, that confirmed. Does that mean that the GOP party, the party itself, is still healthy, yet only this Trump symptom is unhealthy? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that the GOP is unhealthy if uh, they've nominated Donald Trump to be their candidate for president. Well, they are nominating him at this moment, and they nominated already, he's and already he's going to make his acceptance speech tonight. That is correct. So, so? It's, it, it does speak volumes it's all about the GOP. If Let me say if there's, a, and this has to do with Ted Cruz, for example. Mm -hmm. Ted Cruz. Oh, he was. Uh, <laughs> Ted Cruz w didn't support Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And he was booed at the convention. He was. Now the question, who booed him? I believe these were people that they put in the audience to, uh, to uh, part of the campaign uh -huh. to give further support to Donald Trump in case there was some opposition. This was all planned, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, my big concern is he went there, um, he gave his support for the party, mm -hmm. he just held back. And he congratulated Donald Trump. Oh, well, he did. But he just mm -hmm. held back from giving him his support. Mm -hmm. Now, he's been attacked because he gave a pledge. But he, he mentioned about his principles. The only thing he did not mention it was that he endorsing, he was endorsing Donald That's correct. Trump. That's the only thing uh, that he missed. That's right. He, he didn't want to endorse him. He was it, in support, but he was not endorsing. Correct. Mm -hmm. And. You know, he explained why he didn't endorse him mm -hmm. um, afterwards, mm -hmm. and because of the tax of, of his, uh, to his father and uh -huh. his wife. And this is what Donald Trump does, talking about Donald Trump the individual. Mm -hmm. Now, he's a, he would be a model, again, not for the, you know, Solomon, only the United States, but for the world. Um, attacking people personally and saying things that are not truthful mm -hmm. is not the character that we want in a leader. And in fact, it's Attacker. not a character for a leader. Attacker, not a unifier. A, obviously, not a, not a unifier, but uh -huh. not only that, just it's basically slanderous mm -hmm. to, to say that his father w was uh, partly responsible for killing a, a president. Uh -huh. I mean, w that's a, a huge attack. Calling his wife ugly is, mm -hmm. is bad enough, but you know, w these children have to look up to a president. Oh, yeah, sure. And sure. Is, this, is this somebody yeah. that mm -hmm. we, we want to, mm -hmm. to be the, the president or the leader of the free world? I do uh, not think so. I, I do not want mm -hmm. my son. If Donald Trump's on TV, I would want my son to turn off the TV. I see. All right. Okay. Uh, my dear audience, today with my good friend, Alan Diamanti, we're sharing his beautiful thoughts about uh, the uh, GOP convention. Of course, seeing is believing. When you do look at Randall, you want to look from your to your left-hand side to your right-hand side so that you get an overall picture. Two days ago, we had my friend Ken Hemming talking about this GOP from the right-hand side. Now we have Alan talking from this side. Well, anyway, by balancing the two, probably you'll see a clearer picture. So we'll take a very short moment out. When we come back, we'll continue with my list of questions, which I'm not even 20%, not even 10, 15% done. So I got to hurry up, so stay with us. Hello, my dear fellow Americans. Welcome back to the show. Jack Chow with a comment on GOP convention, which is happening as we speak on the fourth day, which is the last day, by which at the night of uh, the last uh, uh, 
uh, day, uh, Donald Trump is going to make his acceptance speech to his nomination of the candidate for now uh, for United States of America as president to compete with uh, Hillary Clinton. All right. Now we're looking at a picture which is very confusing, very mystifying, and there are lots of symptoms that popping keep popping up. Now, what is the game? What is the game that uh, well, the kids play when they pop those kind of little thing figure the, popping up? The gopher. The gopher? No, 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 no. There is another name for that. When you go to uh, to 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 uh, a party or something, or even at the uh, beach, right? And you, you have you, that with the hammer. Yeah, you, you, you with a hammer, you knock gopher. those. Yeah, that's it's a gopher. gopher that comes out yeah, of the hole. Yeah, the pop up. Yeah, and it looks to me exactly like that thing that you have one popping up and then another and then another and then another and w never stopping. What are you referring to? I'm referring to the situation. I'm referring to Donald Trump's lies. Oh, come on. They, they, <laughs> I mean, his, All right, his let's, lies talk, about like that. let's talk, talk about it. Let's talk about it. As soon as we finish talking about one lie or mm. one attack uh -huh. on, on a community, There's another. another one pops up. Okay. There's right. so many that we're let's not Let's talk about anymore. them one by one. So before doing that, let me ask you another question. Prior to the convention, there was a call of the committee, of the organization committee of the convention uh, to ban guns, gun barriers for three days, right. which was later denied, which was uh, automatically denied by the PD. So my question is that the, the request of, a ban, of banning guns itself, by itself, does it go in consistency with the pursue of uh, gun right of the GOP party, please. Well, it's very interesting because, uh, no, the, the platform for the GOP is the Second Amendment, mm -hmm. um, should be interpreted to its extreme. Mm -hmm. Everybody should have a gun. You know, your two-year-old toddler could probably have a gun. Everybody should have a gun. There shouldn't be any restrictions on guns mm -hmm. as being the, their platform, Second Amendment, you know, no restrictions, period. Um, All right. So it's kind of funny that... Uh, you know, worrying about themselves, mm -hmm. they want to do a, a ban for guns. And you know what? If my analysis, and the reason this is the reason why I'm not Republican, is because I really see it as a party of self-interest. Uh -huh. It's not a party of the uh, what's best for the greater good. It's a party of really of you know what's best for for us as mm -hmm. individuals. And if it mm -hmm. if it hurts somebody else, it's really not our problem. Mm -hmm. And it's and I and I see this as another example of that. They wanted to ban guns because they're worried about uh, you know there might be some shootings there mm -hmm. and somebody can get hurt, especially if they're there, someone mm -hmm. might get hurt. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, and, and I found it you know very interesting that the the police department, um, especially in light of the violence against police officers, uh, you know did not uh, go that route, and uh, you know it's it's probably because you know the the sentiment in the state of Ohio. Yeah, this morning I heard over the radio that uh, outside the convention, there is almost a uh, an art show, almost like a festival. You have all kinds of eye catchers and people burning uh, flags. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People setting fire on themselves. Well, and uh, well, of course, and there's lots of attacks or something like that. So, and that, given the fact that, that None of any of the conventions there goes with the, it goes without the protesters. We take that as a norm, but inside we have quite a bit. We have quite a bit, and starting at the very beginning, there is a call for 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 for, for roll calls. There is a request for roll calls, which was uh, later put down, but caused quite a uh, confusion a little bit, and also the uh, Melania. Uh, speech herself uh, and the, the writer, speech writer, uh, who resigned a day yesterday, as of yesterday, asked to resign, not resign anyway. Your comment of the of the of the mess, please. Okay, you know the the grand old party is really trying to hold it together. Glory, glorious, no, not grand, glorious. Well, I I'm, did my study, glorious. I'm, I, you call it glorious, I. I'm not going to go any further than that, but let's call it <laughs> let's call it the GOP. How's that? Okay, GOP. All right. Okay, so good. the GOP is really trying to hold on to what they could hold on I to. I see. And I understand. And that's what they should be doing. It's mm -hmm. a party. They should. They're, they're trying to keep it together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it could to allow the the, the roll calling to allow the debates uh, would really send a message 
of how mm -hmm. disorganized they are. That's not what they wanted to do. They're mm -hmm. really grasping to, to make it seem like they're as organized as possible. Mm -hmm. They're really trying to control it. And the campaign is really trying to control it, like I said, um, doing everything possible. So with respect to Melania, if I should say, mm -hmm. um, I thought it was very unfortunate. I frankly liked her speech, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, but I thought it was very unfortunate that uh, that she had to plagiarize. Uh, now, whether she's taking responsibility, she could have given a comment, but the campaign chose for her not to go to the media and, and answer what happened. Mm -hmm. um, I think that speaks volumes as well. But it's only her word, the writer's word now, well, so far. In my opinion, they're using the writer as mm -hmm. a scapegoat. But it was Melania herself that said mm -hmm. she wrote most of that speech. She made that uh -huh. statement before mm -hmm. the speech was heard. Mm -hmm. She made that statement. She should take responsibility. Mm -hmm. And she never took responsibility. The writer's claim was that uh, she read the draft that uh, Melania wrote. And a uh, matter of fact, she ends up liking some of the statements, some of the words or phrases, whatever, without realizing those are the words said by Michelle Obama. And that for that, she apologized for that she asked to resign. So it's well, kind of like she's taking responsibilities. Am I right? Um, you're talking about Melania or you're talking about the writer? Yeah, I'm talk talking about the writer. Yeah, um, I'm not sure what kind of responsibility the writer's taking. Uh, mm -hmm. she, she could not say directly that she used the, fo the, the first lady's speech. She did not say that. She mm -hmm. just said that uh, there was some language. Some she, language, some phrases, some words. That's it. Right. And this has been, you know, basically what Donald Trump's campaign's been about. Mm -hmm. Unapologetic. Don't take responsibility. You know, mm -hmm. I, I would have preferred to see and I would have had more respect if uh, Donald Trump, you know, went to Cruz when he was there, shook his hand, congratulated him for coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, that would have mm -hmm. been more respectable. He doesn't apologize for anything. Mm -hmm. When I make a mistake, with the term is man up. You yeah, man yeah. up. Uh -huh, uh -huh. When you make a mistake, you man up. You apologize. Yeah, yeah, right. I was mm -hmm. in an incident recently of where an individual honked at me, and I was pulling over, and he pulled over, mm -hmm. and it was like some road rage. The guy got out of the car like he was going to hit me. And he came to me and he apologized. Uh -huh. And I said, that was a beautiful thing that you did. Yeah, I was afraid right. that mm -hmm. you wanted to be you're violent. Right. Mm -hmm. Instead, you apologized to me. You're right. Mm -hmm. That's the type of people that we want in our society. Exactly, exactly. And by that, I have a little insertion. Speaking of my son, when he was two years old, I saw when he started to understand, was able to understand talking, I told him, now the now on, from now on, no matter who is wrong, even if I'm wrong, I need to apologize, and you do too. And this tradition carries on till today. Right. When I do something wrong, I sit down with him, I say, son, seriously, I apologize. Yes. And he does the same thing. From, uh, that's a quality we're talking about, another day, a talk, topic of another day. Now. Let's do it. So, so uh, of course, <laughs> let's do it. And, and now with the, the fact that, that uh, when the writer, when the speech writer, asked to resign, it was requested, uh, it was, uh, when she requested to resign, was not uh, granted. That's a good thing, that's a good happy ending, don't you think so? I, I don't know what, I, I really don't know what's truthful and what isn't, unfortunately. Uh -huh. So, uh, is she not gonna get paid anymore? Will she get paid? Will she be continue to be part of the staff? Mm. I really don't know. I mean, we already know that there was uh, a campaign uh, manager that was mm -hmm. fired in the Trump camp. Um, and oh, there is, who said that uh, one of his staffers, one of his campaign staffer, uh, says that uh, he or she calls for death sentence for Hillary Clinton? Yeah, um, I, I didn't hear this. Mm -hmm. um, so I read this on the news. Again, there's different people that say and different things. And the FBI things. is investigating yeah. on that. Well, there's, there's, there's people that believe this, that, uh, you know, that you should suppress other people. Mm -hmm. Even I think Donald Trump, when he was asked about Turkey, uh -huh. and if, uh, if he would be supportive of what they're doing in suppressing the free speech over there, his response was more or less, uh, don't, don't want to get involved into the internal issues of another country. I mean, what's going on in Turkey, they, um, I think the, the government's fired mm -hmm. uh, thousands 
of educators uh -huh. because of the, this coup. Thousands of educators. Um, that were they all involved in the coup or were they just speaking their minds? So, so. there's a suppression of freedom of speech in Turkey going on right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. and, and Donald Trump, instead of speaking like a leader, mm -hmm. is going to take that a isolation, country, a an country, isolationist view. A on country it. without education, without educator, you're going back to jungle. Or let's, no say, let's say you do have an educator, but it has to be the educator that only follows what the government's telling them that they have to do. Oh yeah, that's is another it? jungle. Exactly. All right, good. My dear audience, today with Alan Diamante, I'm having a good time, very wonderful time. Because uh, you know what, there is a, I, 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 I forgot who wrote this, uh, say that I'm bored of life and I did not have the courage to leave on, to keep on living, neither do I uh, uh, have the courage to kill myself. So I'm in between, some kind of like that. So anyway, I, I, I don't remember who wrote this, but anyway, this is exactly what we have, what I have at least. So uh, let's take a very short moment out. When we come back, we'll continue finding the consistencies of the candidate and see who has at least 50% of a chance of getting president of the United States. So stay with us. Hello, my dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, welcome back to the show, Shaq Chow hosting the East West Show with Jin E TV, uh, with uh, uh, many friends attending, being here as my VIP guest. I feel I'm, uh, I'm kind of like uh, uh, having this privilege to touch base with each of the beautiful brand, except uh, there was a comment during the break just now, Alan says that that was a very depressed speech or statement <laughs> when yeah. I said that uh, with a quotation, not an exact quotation because I forgot even the wording, basically saying that neither nor, neither nor, right? And it is a neither nor situation with me because neither do I adore the people on the left hand side, nor do I on the right, so that this is where I am anyway. So back to the question, well, if please. I, if I may respond to that, oh, go ahead, you know, I'm, I'm very saddened by the state of affairs in the United States as a result of this election, as a result of the support for Donald Trump mm -hmm. and how people are willing to support him even though they don't believe he's a good guy mm -hmm. and that they would get upset at people that do, I do, do not too. support him. I do too. You know, I, I would vote for Mitt Romney, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and immediately before Donald Trump. I will really I, wish that happened. And, and yeah. I would vote for uh, any of the Bushes before of Donald Trump, just because Donald Trump has revealed not to be a principal individual. And what saddens me additionally mm -hmm. is his children, which are, they're all very good looking, mm -hmm. um, and they're all very supportive of their father. And some people even say, oh, look how w well behaved his children are, mm -hmm. and uh, he must have done a good job with his children. I don't even know if he raised his children. Maybe it was they had good nannies, mm -hmm. and it, the, the mothers uh, did a good job. No, that I doubt. Yeah, I, I I don't know how involved mm -hmm. Donald Trump. My was son has a father. better behavior, had a better behavior than any of their children, his children. Well, but I'm not a president of the United States. Well, let me just give you an example of what, what concerns me. Aside from Donald Trump, let's say Donald Trump doesn't win. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would be fantastic if he doesn't win. But uh, if he doesn't win, we're looking at his children running for Senate, you know, going into the poli uh -huh. political realm. If he wins, he's going to make a most likely part of his cabinet, mm -hmm. which is, you know, sounds like some sort of demagogue right. that, or yeah, dictator yeah, yeah. Demagog, that, that would get all his family yeah. uh -huh. in, into, the, in, mm -hmm. into the, the cabinet of the United right. States. Okay. But okay. what his son said, Donald Trump Jr., on the mm -hmm. 19th of July, mm -hmm. He's doing the same thing that his uh, father did. Mm. Um, th this is quote. He says, Hillary Clinton is proposing destroying Medicare for mm. seniors. Mm -hmm. She never said that. Uh -huh. But it, they feel comfortable. It's okay. Uh -huh. Because my father, he could lie about anything. It's okay to lie because it's all TV. Is this is a, TV. Is you a, lie. Is it a culture or tradition you're talking about? That's what I'm saying. He's creating a culture. This is a TV culture where Donald Trump has been masterful of using the media mm -hmm. to promote himself 
and it, where it doesn't really matter if you lie or not, whether it's bad publicity or okay, good publicity. Okay, speaking of lies, though, let, 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 let's be specific on those. Uh, there's a lots of comment about uh, uh, the uh, fact that how much is the um, and how big is the percentage uh, in Donald Trump's speeches, speeches. If you put them together, how much of them are lies or are are truth or fact, whatever. And I heard that there's lots of comment, and uh, I read, I did some uh, homework myself. Did you? Oh yeah, I got some stuff here. If you want to, you got some. You want to hear some? Okay. Now. There's, I, there's way too much. This can't be covered in one give, day. Give, I give, apologize. Yeah, give us some examples, please, please. Okay. Um, Donald Trump, uh, July 20th, 2016, Hillary Clinton invested in ISIS with her stupid policies. She was responsible for ISIS. Mm -hmm. ISIS was around before Hillary Clinton uh, became Secretary of the State. Uh -huh. So, total lie. But he feels comfortable, and he said, he's, he said things like this multiple times. Okay, uh, put it this way. When I say lie, I'm saying that lying to a fact. I'm not talking about a uh, uh, by logic or by consistency. You are. Uh, well, am uh, I making myself clear? I think you're talking yeah. about uh, an opinion versus a fact. Is this what you're exactly? Okay, and well, also, for example, I told you if I tell you I don't like X, and now I end up eating X in front of you. However, there are two years time interval. During the time interval, I improve myself from not an eater to an eater, and that is not lie, even though these two are not in consistency. Do you see what I mean? Well, in my opinion, if you have a fact, mm -hmm. it's a fact. Now, sometimes things get taken out of context. Mm -hmm. That's understandable. Yeah, all but right. a fact is a fact, and a lie is a lie. I know. And you know, th mm -hmm. and these are probably debates that okay. people have. When in I the, say in, in my word, in my dictionary, when I say uh, when I say lie, I mean if I call X not edible, that's a lie. If it's edible, it, it is edible. It is right. very edible, right? Okay. So me not eating it for a time doesn't mean the X is not edible. It is edible. And then during the time process, I improve myself from a non-eater to an eater. I change myself, even though I'm I not in consistency. I'm still okay because right. I'm a, I'm an egg lover now. Well, maybe okay. it's a, considered a white lie that we, okay. we would call give it. Give me those. Give me those I'll white give you lies. Another please. One. Yeah, please. Okay, um, Hillary Clinton filibustered legislation to reform Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. That never happened. Hillary Clinton's immigration platform would create total totality open borders. Uh, her her platform is not to open borders. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't have a problem with open borders, uh -huh. but that's not what her platform is. The her, open border is the too broader sense. Too but, broader sense. Yeah, yeah, but these are things that he says okay. uh -huh. that this is what she's supporting: open okay. borders. I'll skip. So yeah. it's it's sending a misleading message to the to the viewer. Okay, mm -hmm. but he doesn't care. ISIS is making millions of dollars a week selling Libyan oil. They they already confirmed that that's not true. Uh huh. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it was totally against the war. Um, he was totally against the war for many years and would destabilize the Middle East. He said this mm. to whom? He said there's, this there's to... There's no evidence that he's ever said that. That he himself, to was, himself. Uh, was, a, was, strong, uh, was strongly going against wars for years. But he's expressed himself that he, this is what he's been saying. I see. And I don't know, he, there's nobody out there that says he's been saying this. Okay. So um, I have tons of information here. Um, even among second and third generation Muslims in the United States, there's no real assimilation. Hmm. That's totally false. There's yeah. actual data on that. I That's see. totally false. It's like saying that Chinese Americans um, do not assimilate um, second or third generations. Mm. Maybe it's true. There are, there are some second or third generations that may not. But mm. to say that this whole group... Mm. No, I say that. I see that very offensive. Go ex ahead. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no system to vet refugees from the Middle East. There's no what? System to vet. Uh -huh. That means to screen them before they, they could become refugees into the United States. Mm -hmm. He says that there's no system for that. This was recently on June 13, 2016. Uh, uh, that I don't know much about. There's Go been, ahead. There's been a yeah. system to mm -hmm. screen these refugees since 1980. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So these, these are facts. Um, right. It says Hillary Clinton wants to abolish the Second Amendment. When did Hillary Clinton say she wants to abolish the Second Amendment? 
Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Uh, it's not a quote-unquote thing, right? She, I mean, he, Donald Trump, or his uh, staffer, or his, uh, his campaign, quote-unquote Hillary Clinton, is not. It's definitely not. No, but right, it's misleading. Okay. I see. It's misleading, totally misleading, misleading right? Misleading. Okay. He goes, uh -huh. well, how about this one? This is a clear one, a fact one, if you're con kind of concerned. Yeah, whether, yeah, yeah, about okay. my eggs, yeah. My numbers are better right now. This was on April 14, 2016. My numbers are better right now than Ronald Reagan's numbers were with Jimmy Carter. Well, that was, uh -huh. that was checked, and it was totally false. Mm. And this was by PolitiFact, which uh, they got the Pulitzer Prize mm -hmm. for checking facts when uh, politicians say things and to confirm whether they're true or not. By logic, okay, let me do a little insert here, here. If I say something, I'm taking a chance, I'm taking a chance among hundreds of audiences, probably there are five will go, only five who will go back home to do the research, and then 95% still take that as a fact. That's correct, nobody, for the most part, and I'm not gonna say nobody, most people mm -hmm. don't have the time to investigate that. To investigate. That's the yeah. reason why you have certain people that uh, are paid to investigate that stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and, and fortunately for us, we have the internet and we have this PolitiFact that does that. They have people check those facts so we could inform the people of the truth. Mm -hmm. So we should, want, we should be concerned when a politician lies to us. And when there are so many statements of that nature though, you cannot afford even to hire small groups to go one by one to check it. That's right. At the time of my grandfather, mm -hmm. my grandfather used to tell me most politicians lie. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you know when a politician is lying? Mm -hmm. Is when they open their mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this, I like that. Yeah. So this is something that's been part of you know tradition. However, we mm -hmm. live in a new time, mm -hmm. and now we could check these facts mm -hmm. pretty quickly practically instantaneously within the same mm. day. But that mean even though they all lie, the only difference is that who lies how much? Well, the question is whether the American people should care or not. And it seems like the supporters of Trump just don't care. Their, their hatred for maybe black people or their hatred for people of, of Islamic background or people that are Chinese or mm. even Asian mm. um, trumps the truth. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter. Call it a Trumpism? <laughs> I'll call yeah. it a Trumpism. Trumpism. I'm going to give you All one right. more mm -hmm. as an example of All the right. black and white. Okay. The five Guantanamo detainees swapped by, uh, for uh, Bo Bergdahl mm -hmm. are back on the battlefield. He said that numerous times. Are so back, and they, they are back on the battlefield. Right. Again, so, five to fight us. So Bergdahl, you know, we did this swap, you know, I didn't really have all the details about it, and mm. I don't even know if they put a yeah, chip. Five to one, that was the exchange. That yes. was the exchange, mm -hmm. but we were able to bring one guy home, all okay? Right. Yeah. All right, mm. he said that they're on the battlefield. This is, it's been investigated, it's been confirmed, mm. they're all in Qatar, okay? Uh-huh, so they're not back on the battlefield right. to fight us. They're in Qatar. I see. Okay, we know where they're at, mm. but he says that. And this he said on January 10, 2016. I see. Okay, and I think he said it more than once. Mm -hmm. He also said Canadian-born Ted Cruz has had a double passport. That's where did he get that? Ah. Is that a soft lie? Is it? I don't really care. I don't really care about Ted Cruz personally. I don't support Ted Cruz. But uh, what Ted Cruz to clarify himself? Well, he he never said he had a double passport, and he doesn't have a double passport. But mm -hmm. but Donald Trump felt comfortable to say he had a double passport, mm -hmm. and this was confirmed. Okay. I see. He also said that he 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 um, suggested that they do the convention in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Well, that was also checked. No, he had no say so where the convention was going to be. Okay. Uh -huh. But he sa he said that. In order, as if to say that he was part of making all that happen in Ohio to get the support of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is a person that I wouldn't trust as president, and this is a person I probably wouldn't trust and, to uh, hire my company. Probably. And one, and one more thing, if I may. Yeah, go ahead, please. One more thing. Mm -hmm. The ghostwriter of mm -hmm. The Art of the Deal. Did you uh -huh. hear about that? No. The, the person who actually wrote Art of the Deal, uh -huh. getting the information from Donald Trump, Donald Trump gets all the glory of it, of course. He was, a, he was hired by Donald Trump to do it. Mm. He spoke out. 
Oh, that book you're talking about. His famous book. Yeah, 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 that book you're talking right. about. Right. Yeah, of course. Donald yeah, yeah. Trump said that The Art mm -hmm. of the Deal was the, the, the one of the best-selling books ever. Mm -hmm. All it, right. It wasn't. It was, I don't even think it was a bestseller. Okay, all right, good. It looks like we have to stop here because uh, even the light goes on and on. Or we have only limited time for one segment. Let's take a short moment now. When we come back, we'll continue right, we'll, with a wonderful fact, please. Hello, my dear audience. Welcome back to the show. Jack Shaw is hosting, and I can't help laughing about the content of this discussion. Uh, well, when I started, I thought that I was going to treat this whole thing seriously. But when it goes this deep into the story, the fact itself, though, I decided to probably to laugh a little bit. All right. Now, uh, back to my audience. Just with me today is my good friend, Alan Diamante. He is a wonderful attorney, immigration attorney, and he has a, a very big sensitivity, super sensitivity of the of the uh, uh, subject of immigration reform, right? As also one of the major topics or major subject that this country is facing. So do you think Donald Trump, even though he has many uh, plans worked out in the rebuild of America though, and uh, I believe reform, immigration reform is one of them. Do you think he has any plan of that, please? Well, first of all, I have no idea what the details of his immigration uh, concept is. Um, he talked about building a wall. Mm -hmm. He's talked about uh, providing... So building a wall is one of his tactics to deal with the immigration problems. Right. But he, he hasn't expressed any details of the logistics about building a wall, mm -hmm. other than he expects that the Mexicans, he'll get the Mexican government to pay for it. Uh, no, by, they will not pay. Well, he, he believes by through tariffs, and he's going to get he's going to do tariffs against China as well, mm -hmm. um, because he believes that uh, pretty much the, the United States is technically at, at you war. You think China will come come here to help with the, with the wall? No, no, they haven't. They're, I don't think they're going to have anything to do with the wall. No, we had a but, wall already. But he's home. he's in terms of trade, he's talking about uh, sanctioning China mm -hmm. with huge tariffs, probably forty percent, forty five percent. I forget the number that he uh -huh. has recently used, mm -hmm. but uh, you know if that's his solution. Uh, my concern is that uh, that he's going to be isolating or hurting our relationship with China. Is he aware that China is the biggest uh, creditor of our debt? Um, I don't know what he's aware of. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't think he really cares. I think all he really cares about, he wants to be the leader of the United States. By he cutting wants China the off the connection with the United States, though, we'll be hurting ourselves. Again, the, the, the President of the United States should be a unifier of the world. Okay, mm -hmm. and the, the bad actors in the world, he should get partners in the world to help reform the bad actors. That's the way a leader should be looking at, at, at the world. Uh -huh. Instead of, you know, um, trying to threaten China mm -hmm. and try to threaten other, other countries, mm -hmm. um, saying that they're, they're not allies economically or mm -hmm. in other ways, and threatening them. Let me, the, the, Donald Trump's presidential mm -hmm. campaign has been a campaign I wrote it down here, of, of violence. Mm -hmm. This is a violence against groups, uh, okay? Uh -huh. Violence against the... Say, say it again, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a campaign of violence, violence against groups, mm -hmm. and violence against facts, okay? And history. If you, if you look at the history, people like Donald Trump, demagogues that mm -hmm. are willing to say anything to get the position and are willing to use threats to get their way, they're not apologetic, this person is very dangerous, mm. and the people that follow him are just as dangerous. Mm. Um, so I think that the United States has to wake up and do everything possible to stop Donald Trump. Not only that, we still haven't seen the tax returns of Donald Trump. He still mm. has something to hide when previous candidates for the presidency have openly revealed there's their, a, their tax, their, their, their tax uh, form. Here's my concern. There's a lot of comment about him being a loose cannon, right? Now, when, the, uh, when I say that, I mean that in the very beginning, when people call him loose cannon, loose cannon though, lots of serious attention were caused. 
And later, when this becomes into a norm, the people say, hey, that's his character. It's okay. Let him be the way he is, right? So that's his character. And so on and so forth, so on and so forth. We get used to, we get a loose cannon fire at no prediction of time or something like that. So that is a danger that I'm afraid of. Do you think I may rec represent some Americans? Well, you made a, a, what I believe was a, terrifi um, uh, a depressing statement before. Yeah. And I believe that... that I'm very depressed. I I'm, I'm, de I'm very dismayed and I feel a little sense of terror by Donald Trump um, that he wouldn't, he wouldn't be reluctant to push in the button you know, and start uh, a nuclear war. I see. This person does not have the, uh, the conviction nor the demeanor of somebody who would have that power. And uh, I'm very concerned. Um, and he's also lied about our, our nuclear arsenal. That's another lie that he said. Right. That uh, we're 30 years in, um, behind on technology on our nuclear arsenal and they're in shambles when they're not. Uh, but just a, a, just a, another thing that Matter was checked. Matter of fact, we're not. Yeah, okay. I know that. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so yes, I, I must agree. I'm, I'm very concerned, and uh, you know, I, I really hope that the, the United States stops this. But one thing that I found out, he did quite well, and uh, there was one speech he made at the uh, National Center uh, one one day about two months ago that when he was talking about our foreign policies, especially talking about NATO's, okay, and talking about the union itself. And he says among the 28 countries who are members, only four of them does their own job of national defense, and we do the 24, other 24, and it is American money. He want to call that off as part of his international policies, yes. or foreign policies, whatever, got that way. Your comment on that, please? That makes a lot of sense to it, me. It's another false statement, okay? Um, it the is? United, the United States has not been funding NATO. Uh, they, uh, you know, the countries involved have been raising uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. So to say that the United States has been paying, the been writing the check, is a false statement. And, it, and that's all documented. Uh, Again, uh, my concern is this person is entirely insensitive and, why and he dangerous, says, and if mm -hmm. I may, and I'm going to give you the example of the uh, Judge Curiel, that, uh, that he, he made very insensitive statements to a whole class of people, you know, saying that uh, this judge was not to be re trusted, he should be recused because of his, his ancestry. His ancestry? Uh, his, 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 his heritage, his, his parents uh -huh. were from Mexico. Hmm. He's from Indiana, but he even thinks that's enough to uh, go against I him. See. So I see. anybody of Mexican descent um, should be recused from judging him. It's, it's, it's absurd. It's insensitivity. He's never been apologetic for mm. that. He could have said, you know what, my words just didn't come Nobody out Nobody right. is asking him to do that because we are used to, because we're... We're getting that as a norm, that's a character of himself. He's creating a norm. That's the danger. That's a danger. That's the, why using the I'm media. so worried about it. Okay. Now, back to the point. When he also mentioned in, at that uh, speech of the National Center, says that about the, the United States should learn to walk away from negotiation table. That was something that makes sense to, to me. So yes. does it to you? Well, it, you know, whether they have to learn to walk away from the table, there are times that you could walk away from the table. Um, we boycotted the Olympics on, on certain situations mm -hmm. because of it. Um, so yes, if, if it dictates that the, the best course is to walk away, yes. Now talking about the Iran deal, mm -hmm. that's another issue. He mm -hmm. says things about the Iran deal that he has nothing to support it by. I don't even mm -hmm. think he's even read the Iran deal. Um, so uh, to, to say statements like that, that is a terrible deal, um, it would be nice if he gave the specifics as to why it's a, t a terrible deal. But meanwhile, uh, the likelihood of them having a nuclear bomb in the near future has mm. probably been diminished right. by that deal. I see. So um, if anything, uh, we should be applauding the, 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 the U.S. government for doing everything possible to make sure that there's peace between the United States and Iran. Mm. Could be the fact that he's not even inside the story himself. 
uh, wait until later, he gets inside and gets some information, does some homework, he will might change himself. Back to home, back to home, talking about job creations. He said, he did mention several times about job creations. Do you think he has a good plan with job creations or it's a good take to emphasize on job creations, please? You know, I don't know what his plan is on job creations, and I don't know uh, how he feels about the increase of the uh, minimum wage. I don't believe that he's a supporter of the increase of the minimum wage, um, as if the, uh, you know, it, whether it's needed or not. Talking about job creations, he hasn't been specific as to what kind of jobs he's going to create. Um, at this point, um, unless we focus more on providing education for the American people and, and if anything, I'm a firm believer that the education should be free in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's free in many other countries. Um, and a lot of people that have, let's say, dual citizenship with Germany, for example, will go to Germany and, and get their doctorates in, in Germany. Um, and, for the, and if they do that, the likelihood is they'll end up staying in Germany mm -hmm. and helping the German economy versus the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. So the job creation that he's talking about, I really don't know because he hasn't given any details. Um, but one thing I'm going to tell you, there is, there is, there he's, is. Yes, he's talked, he's talked about building a wall. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah. we're he's, thinking of the same thing. Right, he's talking Great. about building a wall. Yeah, all right, good, and good. these are probably the jobs that he's talking about. You know, at minimum wage, having people lay bricks on, on the border, which would be a lot of bricks. These are the jobs he's talking about. He's talking about the Mexicans coming to this country, taking the jobs, and he, I think he actually said it from the blacks. Okay. That's, I think that that's also another, that's an also a, a racist a, comment mm -hmm. to say that black folks, you know, are the ones that uh, are losing jobs because of the Mexicans. Now, we know a lot of the, Im the, the immigrants that come into the United States from Mexico mm -hmm. um, with, without a visa, you know, are doing the jobs that most Americans don't want to do. Mm -hmm. they're, they're doing the yard work, they're washing dishes, and to say that these are the jobs for the blacks is entirely offensive. Mm -hmm. All right, back to the wall building though. Well, you would exactly said the same thing that I was going to say. Building a, a wall of 700 plus miles long, and I don't know how thick that should be, but this is going to be a huge job that is going to take like tens of, uh, of years all right, to, to build. Right. And that's a good opportunity to create a job. Do you think so? Let's do it. Yeah, but how, how, how is that going to really help our uh, economy? It's, mm -hmm. it's not substantial enough. Um, mm -hmm. We have to create jobs in all sorts of different sectors. Um, we have to help businesses here in the United States. Uh -huh. uh, we have to you know, increase the minimum wage so people can live um, with the, the wages that they're receiving for a 40-day work week. 40 day work week. All right. We shouldn't expect people to work three or four jobs and work 80 hours a week, especially if we expect them to have families. Um, so we really got to support and people. And you were saying there's nobody going to fund the job of the wall building? Well, if we just, I mean, we have no record. Even if I had a minimum pay. We have no record of Donald Trump doing anything in the government, of course. Mm -hmm. So all we have is his own record in, in, in business, which has benefited him. Supposedly, we, just, we don't even know how solvent he is. Mm -hmm. um, so th that's another thing is why is it, does it have to be a mystery for us? Why does he have to hold that back from us? But let's assume he is a multi-billionaire um, who has benefited from that and who has been hurt by it. Okay, there's people that have been speaking out about people that have contracted with Donald Trump where he doesn't pay them the money that's been agreed upon and he shakes them down and pays them pennies to the dollar. There's been over 3,000 lawsuits against him. I know, him. exactly. That's why, that's, ex that's why exactly this whole situation is so mystifying, right? A person, according to your description, with that many problems, why would him get that big support, that many support? And that whole cold country is calling for Donald Trump. Because, right? it, because he's appealing to a lot of people that are, you know, mystified by TV culture. You know, I too um, was sucked into you know, the, the, and that is the problem. I, I, I'm sucked into it now, and I'm wasting a lot of precious time where I should be helping people in the community yeah. today, mm -hmm. talking about Donald Trump. And then on TV, I'm watching it on TV, and then, you know, you have The Apprentice, 
and uh, mm. I used to watch that. You're fired. <laughs> I found okay. I found it very entertaining. Mm -hmm. He's just taking it to the next level. He's mm -hmm. he's taking reality TV to reality oh, when it's really scripted. But you know what? Even what he's doing is scripted. after all, you're not wasting your time with me here because you're educating a bunch of my audiences because they love you and that's why and I'm they here. take your analysis. So my dear audience, we're way way over time. I really have to hold uh, hold up now. So. And uh, my dear audience, thank you for watching with me today is my Alan Diamante good friend of um, Alan Brown, all right, anyway, I'm kidding. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Diamante is a wonderful attorney and he is also a lover of the community. And uh, as a matter of fact, to tell you the truth, he canceled his two appointments uh, for this morning to come here to share his thoughts with the community. And I uh, would like to point out you're not wasting your time. You are here using your precious time to educate people, to educate our commu community. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, my audiences. And thank you, Alan. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Jack. Thank you.